Hello, Realtor Sonia Rankin and Jimmy here. And today we wanted to come at you with a video explaining the top five things that you should be thinking about if you are thinking and considering purchasing a home out of five. Number one is consider getting a real estate agent as a buyer. Um, so get a real estate agent. One, you want somebody in your corner who has experience. I personally go through a house and I spot potential issues. And I bring that up to my buyer that says, hey, listen, I work with a lot of VA buyers. I see that this is this age and that is that age. This is something that might come up in a home inspection report. So we'll wait and see. But that's also a benefit to you as a buyer because it doesn't blindside you when you have two or three repairs that are significantly expensive. You may have not put that offer in that house if you knew that it was gonna need an HVAC or a new water heater or if there was a roof leak. But as we're going through the house, I am not a general contractor. I do spot things that I can point out, material flaws that I come across that you may not see. And I know where to look for certain issues and problems that I can point out and say, hey, we'll see what the inspector says about that, if that's that active leak or is that something that's from the past is it just a stain we don't know but it's a good thought to have in your head that hey there might be a leak there might be an issue after after we get it inspected I'm definitely gonna look at that portion of the report to see if that's an issue so it's so beneficial to have somebody experienced also to help you come up with strategy if you go into a real estate transaction alone the seller likely has a real estate agent who will be representing the 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 transaction and they have a relationship with the seller the seller has given them their business they're getting paid by the seller and so we want to make sure that you have somebody on in your corner even though there's somebody facilitating a transaction technically there's a relationship with the seller and you want somebody who has a relationship with you who can walk through the house and and spot those little things see it from a fresh perspective that hey this looks like it was taped, <laughs> you know, things like that really matter. Um, so, so one, get a real estate agent. It's going to help you. They're only to your benefit. When, when I go through a house with somebody who says they're interested in buying a house, can you go with me? I go with them and, and I get them under contract and I know strategies to get them to the closing table. If not, get them under contract all the way to the closing table. And I'm with them every step of the way, every question, every issue, every problem, financing things come up. I, inform you what the right questions to ask your lender are and I get you in touch with the right people when things go right and when things go wrong. So I'm here throughout that whole process. I lost my secretary. All right, whatever, Jimmy. Bye. So as we go through the process, number two, I would recommend that you got a good agent who will ask if they have a survey. It can save you hundreds if not thousands of dollars if your agent has the foresight to say, hey, do you have a land survey? Oh, that's all it takes is a question to the seller. Do you have a land survey available? And if they do and they share it, title will determine and, and the lender can determine if that's a good enough survey. If that's up to date enough and there hasn't been concrete poured, yeah, we can use this. And then you don't have to pay for a survey in most cases. It works out that way for me a lot of the times because I think of ways my experience taught me what to ask for, how I can help my buyers, how I can benefit them. So I go that extra step. So ask if they have a survey available and you might just save some money there. Number three is narrow it down. Don't go on Zillow, pick out 70 houses and say, I want to go see 50. You're going to be done after three or four. Don't see more than five houses in a day. You're going to get to where you're like, wait, what house had the garage? You're, it's too much. It's too much mentally to observe. It takes a lot of time. And also, it doesn't really benefit you because they start all blending in after a while. So go see a maximum, maximum of five houses a day. I've done more, I've done less, and I do so much better with less. So as you're going to these houses, as you're looking at this list that you've come up with, narrow it down. Did you say you needed a big fenced-in yard and five of them don't have a fenced-in yard? Don't settle. Get rid of those. They don't apply. They're, they're higher priced. It wouldn't make any sense for you to put your own fence in at that price point. Get away. Done. Did you, didn't you you say you wanted 
a house that had at least 2,000 square feet? Okay, well, this is 1,400 square feet. That is not gonna do it. Your last place was 1,400 square feet and you had no room. Get out of here, put that on the not list. Put that on the maybe later list. But as you're, as you're going down your list, just scrutinize, don't settle, don't see houses that you like the way they look, but the functionality does not match what your criteria originally was. Is this house $5,000 over what your pre-approval limit is? Get rid of it, that, that's not in the cards for you. Set it aside, maybe later, maybe things change and they're not gonna wanna negotiate because they dropped the price three times. So think about those little things when you are going through this process. Another one, we'll say number four, is as you're going through the process and considering different houses to purchase, look at the age of the roof. Three things that are deal killers. The roof, the HVAC, and the water heater. In our area, water heaters just typically around $2,000 installed, right around there, depending on what company you use. In our area, HVAC can be seven to $10,000. Consider that. Uh, the, in our area, a roof can be, goodness gracious, anywhere from $5,000 to, to ninety thousand dollars for terracotta apparently so it can it can really matter if you have a shingle or a metal roof we're generally looking at you know right around fifteen to thirty thousand depending on how big the house is look at the age of the roof the water heater and the HVAC these are all things that can come up during a four point inspection and they can be deal killers for you if you don't don't plan on putting money into the house when it comes to those three items before closing. So know that that might need to be negotiated to be fixed, that may need to be negotiated into the offer price, that may need to be negotiated as if your bank account has that or not. So consider those things. And number five, when you are interested in buying a home, consider the location. If you have a specific school you want your kids to go to, make sure it's within the parameters of that school. If you have a job that you've taken and you hate driving to work, make sure it's less than 20 minutes, 30 minutes away. Have that number in your mind. I do not want to drive more than this far away because regardless of how beautiful the home is, if you're sick of driving from your current location, you're probably going to be sick of driving if this is a longer distance than you have to commute already. So take into consideration the area in which you buy when it comes to your job location, when it comes to school location, will the bus come and pick uh, anybody up? Like consider all those little factors if they apply to you. So those are my five tips uh, for home buyers. And uh, yeah, my name is Realtor Sonia Rankin with Realty One Group Emerald Coast. Uh, if you have any questions or you're looking to buy in this general area or anywhere, contact me. I know great agents all over the country and in other countries. And if you're over here in the Emerald Coast, I'd love to help you myself. I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.